We will now hear three talks given by young men in the Aaronic Priesthood in the order that I shall name them. Dennis Spackman, a priest of the Lewiston Second Ward of the Benson Stake. He is the son of Rex C. and Mildred Spackman. A teacher, Mark Peterson. Las Vegas 27th Ward, Las Vegas East Stake, the son of Edgar and Ethelyn Peterson, and a deacon, Jeffrey Smith, of the Oak Hills 1st Ward, East Sharon Stake, the son of Wilford and Ruth Smith. For years, we have been taught that the priesthood is the authority to act in God's name. Now our leaders are telling us that priesthood is the responsibility to act for God. Was the gospel restored before the priesthood? No. The priesthood was restored first. It had to be, for it is the priesthood that sponsors the gospel and regulates the church. God's work must be done, and God has given the priesthood the responsibility to do his work. We in the priesthood are God's representatives. It is our responsibility to do his work and to do it as he would do it. Our first responsibility is to be of service. Samuel, prophet of the Old Testament, while still a child, was given to Eli to prepare him to serve the Lord. The prophet Joseph prepared for nine years before he received the Melchizedek priesthood. The church has many programs for us to prepare for the great responsibilities of a mission and the Melchizedek priesthood. Starting with the primary, Sunday school, MIA, seminary, and not the least, the Aaronic priesthood, which offers every boy opportunities to prepare. To get my individual award each year, I must fulfill a requirement of studying and memorizing scriptures. This gives me a much better understanding of the gospel. The talks I am asked to give makes me more at ease in front of an audience and prepares me in discussing the gospel with others. Each time I go home teaching, I increase my ability to meet and be interested in people and understand their problems. By working, playing, and studying together with other boys my age, I learn how to get along with them and understand them. Doing my assignments regularly and well develops responsibility and dependable habits in me. These will prepare me to fulfill my responsibility as a leader in the kingdom of God. One of the requirements of being prepared is to be worthy. Recently, my grandparents returned from a mission to Nova Scotia, Canada, and they related this story to me. For 25 years, the elders have tried to preach the gospel on Prince Edward Island, but the people resisted and complained to the police so the missionaries had to return to the mainland. But because of their efforts, in 1963, there were eight Mormons on the island. One of these was a boy, 16 years old, whom we'll call Bill. Bill was the only Mormon within 60 miles. His father had died, and his mother wasn't interested in the church. His only personal contact with other members of the church 
was once or twice a year, except for correspondence with the missionaries once a month. Bill's classmates knew that he was a Mormon, and they often tried to get him to use tobacco and to drink alcohol. Once his schoolmates caught him, laid him on the ground, and tried to force liquor into his mouth, but failed. In spite of all the temptations, Bill has kept himself worthy and has honored his priesthood. I have not experienced such intense temptation as Bill has, but my dad, being a seminary teacher, I have been egged a little here and there. <laughs> I firmly believe that because of my preparation, I too will be able to stand up to a situation as Bill did. Through my experience in the church and otherwise, I have learned that certain things are right or wrong. I may once have questioned them, but they are no longer problems. I can rely on these convictions later. It's like having money in a bank to be used when needed, or storing up supplies for one's physical needs. For me, narcotics is not a problem, nor is alcohol. I know it is good to be honest with the Lord. I know the value of prayer. To stay worthy and be prepared takes sacrifice and effort. I have missed four high school courses that I could have taken instead of seminary. To go to church, I often miss a good TV show or leave a good novel. I find that I must organize my time and even put some things aside in order to get my church assignments. And sometimes I have to sacrifice one of the most important things to a teenager, a full stomach. These sacrifices are small, but they are really an investment and they will prepare me for the greater responsibilities later on. In summary, we are God's representatives, and it is our responsibility to act for God and do His work as He would do it Himself. We need to take advantage of the programs provided in the Church and live the gospel to prepare for this responsibility. We must put forth some effort and sa sacrifice a little to be prepared. I pray that all of us in the Aaronic Priesthood will be ready, prepared, and worthy when the responsibility of a mission and the Melchizedek Priesthood comes. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Can any of you remember how you felt or what your father said when you were ordained a member of the Aaronic Priesthood? I felt great. I thought that this was the most wonderful thing that had ever happened to me, and my father reminded me that I was now taking upon myself the priesthood of our Heavenly Father, and that with it came certain responsibilities. And he asked our Heavenly Father to bless me that I might magnify my calling, and he counseled me to get down before my Heavenly Father on my knees in prayer whenever I was troubled about something. In essence, this was the beginning of my partnership with my Heavenly Father, which has helped me and will continue to help me as long as I honor my priesthood. Now, what does this partnership with our Heavenly Father mean? Doesn't it mean we should be loyal to Him, show our love for Him by doing the responsibilities He has set down for us? Of course it does. Now, when a person says responsibilities to me as a teacher, I immediately think of my assigned responsibilities, such as preparing the sacrament, ushering, home teaching, fast offering collecting, and the other responsibilities that a teacher has. But these are not all. We have a certain spiritual responsibility to our Heavenly Father, and that is to be worthy to hold His priesthood. 
And the best way we can do this is to be morally and physically clean. But in this day and age, that can be quite hard for a person of my age and any age, because the morals of our nation are dropping. It's becoming more and more socially acceptable for younger and younger kids to indulge in things that break the word of wisdom. Young men and young ladies, and my age and younger, are losing their respect for their parents, their elders, and their government. And if they can't respect their parents and elders whom they can see, how can they possibly expect to honor and obey our Heavenly Father whom they can't see? You know, in the school that I go to, a lot of the kids think it's a big deal to call their parents by the term the old man and old lady, and it really bothers a lot of them when I don't refer to my parents by this term, but rather as mother and father. When it comes to finding some examples of the kind of partnership we want to have with our Heavenly Father, there are several, I think, that we can choose from. In the history of the world, no one represented this partnership better than Christ did. He did everything our Heavenly Father asked Him to do. He lived the perfect life and finally gave His life so that we might have eternal life. In the early history of our church, Joseph Smith set the example for men to look to. Despite criticism, poverty, and great persecution, he continued to do what our Heavenly Father asked him to do. And due to his great love for our Heavenly Father, he gave his life for what he knew to be true. In this day and age, the person, or the most inspiring example of a person true to this partnership is David O. McKay, our prophet. He has been true to his calling, and he has done everything our Heavenly Father has asked him to do. These men recognize that a partnership with our Heavenly Father is truly the most important partnership of all. And as these men were true to this, so should we be true to this re relationship we have with our Heavenly Father. I enjoy the story of Saul's conversion to this gospel. In it, I believe, is held the key to seeking and finding a better relationship with our Heavenly Father. As you remember, Paul, who was known as Saul, was on his way to Damascus to persecute the Christians there. And he was bound that he was going to bring these Christians back to Jerusalem. As he journeyed close to the city of Damascus, a bright light shone round about him, and he fell to the earth stunned. And he heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And Paul answered, asked, Who art thou, Lord? And the voice said, I am Jesus. Paul, now realizing that he had to establish a good relationship with he whom he had been persecuting, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? With this question, Paul began his great mission for our Heavenly Father. And I believe that if all of us as priesthood holders would ask this question, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? That we would be able to serve as greatly and as nobly as Paul did, and we would find a true relationship with our Heavenly Father in this priesthood calling. I'd like to conclude tonight by saying that I know this church is true, that this priesthood which we hold is truly the priesthood of our Heavenly Father, and that if we continue in this partnership in the manner which we should, our Heavenly Father will help us and bless us in everything we endeavor to do. I say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. When I was first given this assignment, I thought my heart would stop beating. In fact, I think it will right now. <laughs> but then I remembered, whenever we are working to do what is right, that our Heavenly Father would help us. This is true with any and all of our actions. Whenever we are striving to do what is right and ask of God for help sincerely, He will help us. I was asked to talk about what it really means to me to be a deacon. First of all, there is the obligation involved. Many of these obligations are also opportunities, as I'll point out later. I must, be able, I must set an example for my family and friends and help them to do those things which are right. I can do this by using clean language and having clean thoughts at all times, by exercising determination and loyalty in all things that I do, by attending my church meetings. I must also be an active member in our ward by doing my jobs when assigned, like passing the sacrament, collecting fast offerings, helping with genealogy, and helping to clean up the ward when assigned. As a deacon, I must prepare to hold a higher office in priesthood, along with more challenging responsibilities. This is the one point that I think is of greatest importance as a deacon, that I prepare myself to hold positions of higher service in the church. Every priesthood holder has started out as a deacon. The deacon is the first office in the Aaronic priesthood. Here we learn to function properly in the priesthood. 
This helps us so we are able to work to the best of our ability in the other offices in the Aaronic Priesthood and later the Melchizedek Priesthood. As a deacon, by fulfilling my assignments and keeping the commandments, I receive many special rights, blessings, and opportunities. First of all, I'd like to bring out the point, which many of us forget or don't realize, of why there are deacons and why we must fulfill our assignments. This is one point that I think we should all remember as priesthood holders. This is that our job is to do those things which our Heavenly Father would have us do for Him, to perform ordinances in God's name and with His authority. As an example, I am able to share in a small measure the great atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ as I help to pass the sacrament. Our Heavenly Father needs helpers to perform these duties so that all of the members of His Church might be able to renew their covenants with Him. As a holder of this sacred priesthood, I must strive my hardest to be perfect, for this is the way of our Heavenly Father, and we are doing His work as priesthood holders. As a deacon, I gain many privileges. I learn to work with people. This can and does help me in my everyday life. By the knowledge gained in the priesthood, by working with people, I am able to gain many new friends. I am Later, I hope to be able to go on a mission. If I learn to work with people now as a deacon, I think it will be a lot easier. As a deacon, I gain many new and different friends from the quorum. These boys, all my age, have the same standards that I do. This makes it a lot easier for me to keep God's commandments. With these boys, I'm able to play with the church basketball and softball programs. Here I am truly able to exercise all of those things which I've learned in the priesthood like working with other members, using good sportsmanship, and many more things such as clean language. I also get to go to priesthood meeting. Here we truly learn about God and His kingdom. We learn what is wrong and how to combat these things. In this meeting, and as a deacon, we get to memorize scriptures. These scriptures can help us greatly if we search into them and use them wisely. They give us laws to follow so that we can get eternal life with God. This is the greatest blessing that you could receive, in my mind. As a deacon, I am able to receive help from, it, from many sources. The church leader set an example for me that if I follow, will help me to live a clean life and I will be respected by everyone. My father and brothers have all taught me those things which are right and the path that I should follow. This helps me to work in the priesthood to the best of my ability, seeing that they have already been deacons and now know the path that I should follow. My mother and sister prompt me to do those things which are right. The bishop also does this. A good example of this is this talk. First of all, the stake pres president and his counselor, two very busy men, came to our home to give me this assignment. The bishop prompted me to do my best. The whole family pitched in and gave me ideas to work on. I think that this is a very good example of the gospel and priesthood in action. From all of the things which I've just told you, and from those things which I've learned as a deacon, I know that the Aaronic and Melchizedek priesthoods hold the authority of God on this earth today and that there are no other priesthoods. This is the path to eternal life and happiness today. I am thankful for the family that I belong to that has helped to make it easier for me to do those things which are right, that I should do as a deacon and as a member of this church. I am very thankful that I have the opportunity to be a deacon, and I hope that we might all use our power as priesthood holders wisely. I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The men of the Tabernacle Choir 